Hey yo everybody, welcome to this video, welcome back! We're talking about Insta360 ONE X2. It's arrived the moment, the right moment, more or less. Not, not really that much, but it's arrived the moment to talk about this camera, because I want to share you my experience with it. It will not be a review, a properly a review of this camera, it will not be the technical review of this camera, as I used to do before with the, all the other cameras, because I think that there are too much people doing the reviews of these cameras and that's another I don't want to do another technical review of this camera where I talk you about the resolution and stuff like this. I want to share you an experience. Maybe I'm going to write uh, a couple of links in the description to show you the reviews of the other creators. I'm new in the Insta360 world and uh, this is my first Insta360 camera and I did everything step by step without knowing anything about it because I didn't watch a single video about this camera or about the other Insta360 cameras so I didn't know anything about this and yeah it was a little bit embarrassing <laughs> being a creator a little bit embarrassing but um, I thought this camera would be as intuitive as La Pano 360 cameras but it's not not that much uh, it's easy to use in another way. Okay, let's let, let's begin. Let's begin like from the basics This isn't a professional 360 camera, but it depends on what do you mean when you say professional because uh, the, This camera in my opinion is the Insta360 competitor of the GoPro Max because GoPro Max is the GoPro social media 360 camera and it was thought to be used uh, like the content made with the GoPro Max were thought to be used on social medias. This is the same. Of course, it's a personal opinion. It's a... Alexa, it's a questionable opinion and you can think whatever you want, but in my opinion this is... Uh, of course, it's not a pro-level 360 camera because Insta360 has already the pro series, but this is the um, social media 360 camera and there is a way to think that, like, it's not a way to think, but actually you can work on three C on um, social medias. So basically it could be used for work, and since you're using it for work, uh, could it be considered as a professional 360 camera? Like, professional social media 360 camera? How do I call it? How should I call this camera? But anyway, that's it. This is what it is, this camera, and it works. It works because uh, you can do whatever you want in for social medias. Everything you can do with this camera is like uh, directioned, in my opinion, to social medias, especially to Instagram, uh, but also on TikTok and all the other uh, social media platforms. Because uh, what you can do in the, uh, with this camera, you can't really watch it on your computer um, because of the resolution. Yeah, I didn't want to talk about the resolution in a technical way, but I'm going to talk about this. It's uh, 5.7K videos, 6K 360 photos. Of course, we are not talking about the um, reframe and the resolutions. We're talking about 360. And uh, 5.7K video isn't enough to be watched in a VR headset or at a computer, in my opinion. Of course, I watched a lot of videos on my computer and I have the um, Quad HD uh, monitor, 27 inches. It's not that big and you can already see a big difference between the 5.7k resolution of Insta360 ONE X2 and the 8k videos from La Pano. And you can notice it only if you are watching it with a VR headset or on a big screen. M meanwhile, if you are watching the videos made with this camera on a smartphone, it's okay. It's okay because, of course, a smaller screen even if the resolution isn't that high, it is possible to watch them. And it's everything okay, and especially reframed videos are okay. Watch it on mobile phone. This is the reason, the main reason for which I think this is the social media 360 camera. Of course, because on socials you have a cropped image, so it's even smaller and you can do whatever you want basically. And the 5.7K in this case is okay. 6K pictures. Mm. It could have been more, but... Uh, I mean, I'd uh, I'd like to, it to be 8K 360 photos. I mean, 5.7K videos, but 8K 360 photos, because in 2020, making a 360 camera which doesn't shoot in 8K, at least for photos, I don't know, maybe it's not that enough, but actually thinking, continue, continuing to think about that this camera was meant to be used for social medias, 
6K pictures are okay, are okay because as uh, 5.7K videos, reframed videos are good, of course 6K pictures are good as well and they are really good. I like this camera for a lot of things. Um, okay, let's talk a bit for, uh, about videos and photos since I started this discussion. The videos of these cameras are amazing, are amazing and I would like the other cameras to be inspired by this because the videos are amazing, the dynamic range is really, really, really good. I made a video where I walked from a really sunny place to a really dark place where I, where I um, had some problems to watch with my eyes. But on this camera, re-watching the video, the dynamic range was amazing. It switched from the light to the dark uh, in a really few times and I would, uh, was able to watch uh, really good. And uh, also the other part where I went away from the dark side, uh, from the dark to the light, uh, it was really great. It's uh, it's really amazing the um, dynamic range of this camera in the videos. The other thing, of course, the stabilization. The stabilization of this camera is is mind blowing. Like uh, I, of course, I did my usual tests where I uh, jump it here and there, run to the stairs. And this is probably the most stable camera I've ever had. I, and I also tried GoPro Max. GoPro Max makes a really good job, but this is something else. And it's, it's really amazing. This is probably right now the best choice for who makes sports. And you can see it online. You can see it on Instagram. Because every time you, you, you just scroll down on Instagram, you watch tons of sports videos made with this camera. So the videos of this camera are amazing. And plus there are a lot of modes, uh, there are a lot of features of this camera. You can shoot in slow motion at 3K 100 FPS. Uh, you can shoot in time lapse and uh, you can do uh, the time shift, which is like a, a, a time lapse, but while you are walking more or less. Anyway, there are a lot of modes that you can combine together and uh, make different views, and it's it's really it's really easy to work with the uh, with the videos on this camera, and um, because of the software, of course, but also because of the stabilization and because of the, all the modes uh, loaded uh, inside this camera, the pictures are really 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 good because of the colors. The colors of the pictures are are amazing and I really like them and of course you have a lot of modes also for the, for the pictures you have the um, HDR and you can save the uh, both the HDR the JPEG and the, the RAW file the, the, the things that I like about this camera is the possibility to shoot in RAW Lapano I'm not saying okay uh, <laughs> But um, I didn't work really much with the, um, with the raw pictures uh, of this camera, but I will, after this video, I was just making a lot of tests, a lot of fun, ha having a lot of fun with this camera, let's say, because this, this camera is the camera that you have to buy if you want to have fun. And uh, I had really fun using this camera, uh, also because I bought the, uh, the stick, the invisible stick, I'm gonna talk about this later too, and uh, Mm, it's uh, it's really interesting and uh, you get inspired by this camera because it's small it's portable and you can do you 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 feel like I felt that I can do whatever I want with this camera I can put it wherever I want and I can just run and jump and uh, I, I'm not afraid to scratch it because it's uh, it's rubbed and uh, it, it seems it seems to be ru a rugged 360 camera so you are not really afraid to damage it or uh, to do whatever you want. And one of the best features, of course, as the other 360 cameras already done, is the screen. The screen of this camera is particular, like it's it's really small, as you can see it here. It's, uh, it's really small, but actually you can do whatever you want. You need to go in the settings, you just scroll down and go in the settings, and then go back, and then go to the shooting modes and do whatever you want. There are a lot of settings. You can also watch your uh, footage from here, like, okay. There's an only problem with the screen of this camera is that it's not being small, but it's being locked when you are connected with the app of your phone. Because if you control the phone with your, if you connect your phone to your 360 camera, to your Insta360 ONE X2, you can't uh, do anything 
on your screen and sometimes it's a problem sometimes it's a problem because maybe i want to i want to start a video with my phone because i was checking the iso because of course you can do whatever you want also with the parameters like iso um, shutter speed uh, white balance uh, exposure i I, I already mentioned that ISO. Anyway, you can do, you, of course, you have manual control also uh, on the video and also on the pictures. But, uh, for example, I, well, I made some edits on my phone, started the video with the, with the phone, but then I walk and uh, I want to stop the video. I can't stop it from the button because it's not only the screen, but the whole camera, uh, I, I mean, maybe you can just turn it off, but actually you can't stop and start the video if uh, it's connected to your phone. And it's a problem. It's a problem because uh, sometimes you just need it. You just, it, it's really easy to press a button and stop the video or take a picture or whatever you want to do. But if you are connected to your phone, you can do it. For the rest, the camera is very simple because you just switch between the modes here on the screen or on your phone. And it's, it's really intuitive about how to use it if you don't need anything really particular, if you don't need to understand how the modes works. Uh, work and uh, this is a, a particular thing because I didn't I didn't really understand one of the modes that I have here Which is the night shot because basically night shot should or at least I think takes a lot of pictures With different exposures. I guess like an HDR, but maybe not an HDR I didn't really understand it because when I shoot in uh, in the night shot uh, it, This happens And then, and then, because when I put it in my computer, I just have like separate pictures. And when I watch it with my phone, I, I didn't really, really understand how it works. I'm gonna watch it a bit later. Maybe I really have to watch some tutorials. But this is something that everyone has to experience and have to discover by itself or just go and watch tutorials online. Um, for the rest, the app is really easy and it's really user-friendly. You can do whatever you want on the app. You have the preview, you can change the settings, you can watch your videos, you can edit your videos. And this is a particular thing because uh, on the app you have everything you have in the Insta360 Studio, basically. And uh, uh, you can do whatever you want. I bought the uh, Galaxy Note 20. In this way I have the pen and it's really easy to work with the pen when you have to do something particular really precise but there is a small problem when you have to edit a lot of things and when you have to do a lot of edits in a close time for example if you have to, to make um, like six movements in five seconds it's really hard to do maybe even in less than five seconds let's say in uh, in two seconds you have to do five movements and it's really hard to make because uh, the editing works with the marks so every time you have to do something you put a mark and like change the view put another mark and change another time the view and then the view will change between the marks so basically when you have a lot of marks close it's really hard to work with them it's really hard to select them because you can not zoom uh, like at the frame per frame you can't zoom that much uh, as well or uh, as well as on the insta360 studio on your computer it's not possible to zoom like frame by frame you can have a, a timeline of three seconds on your computer on a 27 uh, inches uh, because you always have like 15 seconds and sometimes it's not it's not enough i i would need to zoom uh, just a little bit to be able to edit the um, the marks and stuff like this so insta360 please uh, make me zoom my timeline <laughs> a little bit more for the rest it's really intuitive you can just um, do whatever you want you can speed up you can speed down you can add the effects it is possible to track someone it's really it's really easy to use both on the app and uh, on the computer uh, and it is possible to reframe your video or export you uh, as a 360 video it is possible to make the color plus or not uh, I mean uh, there are a really really a lot of uh, possibilities of editing of your footage it's not that intuitive let's say let's let's say that maybe i skipped the tutorial at the beginning probably but uh, i i was thinking about something like the editing section 
somewhere on a single part of the screen and then all the rest on there but there are like the the editing sections are someone something is on the top something is on the bottom something is all right so it's it's not really uh, like um, how how could i say it's not really um clean i'd say it's not really clean insta 360 studio isn't clean it's not clean because you have to find the things uh, if you don't watch tutorials <laughs> but for the rest uh, is it's okay it's good it's fast it's uh, user-friendly once you understand how to do it it's really user-friendly it's really fast to work with insta360 studio of course you can work with your footage also on premiere i'm talking about insta360 studio because it's free and uh, a lot of people would not buy like premiere just to post videos on the on instagram and the other thing that I just remembered about the, about the app, because I mentioned the app, is that there is the Insta360 community, and this is the reason, the main reason for which I thought this camera would be um, a social media 360 camera, because there is also the Insta360 community on the app where you can upload your footage, and it's a kind of social because you have followers, you have likes, you have comments, and it's the Insta360 social media on the app where you can upload this footage. So. Um, I thought about this. So this is the the professional social media camera, social media, pro I don't know how to call it. So this was my experience, my first experience with the Insta360 brand. Uh, this is my first camera, I really like it and I hope uh, they will fix my problem because I want to use it more and since now the days are a bit longer and a bit better because the past month it rained every single day i was free so i would like to go out more and to understand more this camera uh, thank you for watching this video tell me in the comments if uh, you like this kind of format like i don't wanna i'm not making the full review the full technical review of this camera but i'm making uh, the, the experience review of this camera uh, and of the brand of course in the next video i'm gonna i'm gonna talk uh, about something else also regarding this camera maybe uh, so tell me in the comments if you prefer this kind of videos and of course tell me if you need something else if you want to know something else if you want something uh, about this camera that you can find somewhere else because i don't want to make the copy of another video uh, made by someone else so thank you for watching this video this was my experience with the insta360 one x2 links in the description and uh, nothing i'll keep you updated thank you thank you for watching See you.